Hello everyone, and thank you for watching the Wasabi Aquarium channel. In today's video, I would like to discuss the three important reasons why aquarium aeration is necessary to your aquarium. I'm sure most of you pump CO2 in your aquarium, but we've received quite a lot of questions from our customers and viewers on whether aeration is actually necessary. So today I would like to provide details on the answer to this question as well as tips and advice on aeration in general. So the most often question that I get regarding this subject is that aeration and adding CO2 are almost on opposite sides of the spectrum so it seems like just adding CO2 is enough to maintaining a healthy environment in your aquarium. However, to start with the conclusion, aeration is absolutely essential. It is a necessary part of the daily maintenance procedures in your plant aquarium. So next, I'll explain why aeration is absolutely necessary by breaking it down into three essential functions that aeration provides to your aquarium. The first essential function is that aeration helps balance the amount of CO2 in your aquarium. So most aquariums automatically pump CO2 while your light is on, and the CO2 level remains high after you turn your light off, and aeration helps release some of that CO2 and allows the CO2 balance to maintain a healthy level even at night. During the day, while your lights are on, the aquatic plants are constantly experiencing photosynthesis, so they consume the CO2 in the water and release oxygen. However, once you turn off your lights, the photosynthesis activities decline and they switch to normal breathing, so they consume oxygen and release CO2 at night. So if too much CO2 is in your water, the plants are going to have a hard time breathing as they can't inhale enough oxygen. So, by having aeration in your aquarium at night, it pumps out the excess CO2 so that the aquatic plants can breathe healthily while photosynthesis is not active. This is the first essential function of aeration. The second essential function of aeration is the prevention of oil films. So unless the surface of your aquarium is constantly shaking or in motion, if your aquarium is relatively quiet and smooth, oil films tend to appear on the surface of your aquarium. So if these oil films appear while CO2 is being pumped during the day, aeration helps blow them away and make them temporarily disappear. Of course, aeration does not 100% prevent these oil films from happening again, but I've created a detailed video on how to prevent oil films in the past, so I'll leave a link in the description below for anyone who is having trouble with oil films appearing in their aquariums. So overall, aeration helps dismantle the oil films that tend to appear during the day while pumping CO2 and helps maintain a clear surface throughout the night, which is the second essential function of aeration. So moving on to the third important function of aeration is the vitalization of essential bacteria. This is also related to the first function that I mentioned earlier, but when there is too much CO2 in your tank during the night, the bacteria and other microorganisms that eat up your dirt and help clean your aquarium have a hard time breathing. In order for these microorganisms to fully function and clean up your aquarium during the night, it is best to pump a good amount of oxygen in your water with aeration, which will then vitalize the bacteria and help clean the water in your aquarium during the nighttime. So it helps maintain a good cycle throughout the entire day. I've also created a detailed video on this in the past titled How to Make the Water in Your Aquarium Super Clean. So if you're interested, please watch this video from the link in the description below. 
So ultimately, there are only positive benefits to having aeration in your aquarium. Of course, the air pumps and additional tubes may add to your cost, but in terms of maintaining a healthy environment in your plant aquarium, I would absolutely say it is worth it. Especially the three points I explained in this video are essential in maintaining a longevity of your aquarium, so I would strongly recommend anyone to try adding aeration to your tank. In terms of how to fully utilize aeration, you should be careful not to use it while pumping CO2 as they will eliminate each other's functions. So make sure to use aeration once the lights turn off and the CO2 stops. So you should set opposite timers for both the CO2 and aeration so that the CO2 is activated during the day along with your lights for maybe 7 to 9 hours on average. And the aeration is timed to turn on as soon as they turn off at night and then have them repeat that cycle every day. I've tried various ways to use aeration, but I've come to the conclusion that this is the most effective way. Of course, if you want to go a bit more advanced and maximize the effects of the aeration, I would perhaps leave an hour or two between the moment you turn off your lights and CO2 and when the aeration turns on. This actually prevents the pH levels from moving up and down too excessively. When a lot of CO2 is pumped into your aquarium during the day, the pH levels inevitably decrease. And then when you turn the aeration on and the oxygen starts pumping out the CO2, the pH levels now increase at a high rate which could possibly affect sensitive animals inside your aquariums, such as certain types of shrimp. So, if you leave an hour or two between those two activities, it gives some time for the amount of CO2 in your aquarium to decrease as they evaporate from the water into the air and maintains a more steady pH level even after you turn the aeration on. However, this method also requires two series of timers to automate the time in between the CO2 and aeration, so it does add to your overall cost, but it could be a good method to try once you get used to the timing of utilizing aeration. Last but not least, the one thing to watch out for when using aeration is the water splashing onto the ground, or in the worst case, the water may splash onto your LED lights, which could lead to them breaking. Especially in the case of most LED lights made for aquariums, they tend to have a low water tolerance. Although most lights will usually say they are splash proof, if water stays on your LEDs, they will usually leak into the mechanical parts. And if this happens, the insurance will most likely not cover water problems, so you may end up having to buy a complete new set of lights. From my understanding, the insurance of ADA lights, such as the AquaSky models or the Solar RGB series, does not cover water issues, so you would definitely have to replace them on your own cost if you have any of the ADA products. So I would ultimately be extra careful in trying to prevent the aeration from splashing water onto your lights. But at the same time, if you loosen the exhaust too much, or on the contrary, allow only small bubbles to come out, then it won't allow the aeration to serve its purpose. So one way to prevent this is to place an acrylic lid only when the aeration is activated. Or there is also a product called AirGuard, which is also acrylic but is a smaller version that only guards the specific areas where you want to prevent any splashes and still also allows air to flow through. This is simple but it's actually quite useful. 
If you happen to drop this on the floor by any chance, it also won't break because it's acrylic. Also, in the case of a large acrylic lid, you cannot leave this on your aquarium when the lights are on. This is absolutely a no. So you would have to manually place them on and off upon switching between the CO2 and aeration. So, I would strongly recommend getting the air guard as the most simple solution to prevent your lights from breaking. I've also previously created a video detailing why you cannot leave an acrylic lid on your tank during the day when your lights are on. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below for those who may be interested. So in today's video, we went through why aeration is absolutely essential in maintaining a healthy environment inside your aquarium. Ultimately, the overall balance inside your aquarium can be maintained not only during the day but also at night which leads to a longer lasting fully functioning aquarium. So for those who have not implemented aeration just yet, please use this video and give it a try. I've also listed links for the equipment I introduced today such as the air guard and also the air pump tubes, and anything related to aeration in general. So if you would like to know more details, please kindly take a look at the description section below. If you have any additional questions on aeration or anything you would like to know in more detail, please feel free to leave a comment below. It may be difficult for us to respond to every comment, but we will create more videos like these based on common questions or inquiries that we receive in the comment sections of our videos, so please do not hesitate to leave any questions or comments below. Our mission is to continue creating helpful content for anything related to aquariums, so please subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for our next video. Please also, please also kindly show your support by hitting the like button. This is it for today. Thank you.